a knack for putting, um, uh, you know, uh, masks or helmets on stunt men and, and making them look like me. I never sat on a motorcycle this entire, uh, entire sequence. Hi, I'm Jonathan Jansen, Supervising Location Manager. I'm Carl Hersey, and uh, I'm cinematographer on Barry. I'm Gavin Kleintop. I'm the first assistant director. Hi, my name is Wade Allen. I'm the stunt coordinator for Barry. Hi, my name is Bill Hader. I am the executive producer, writer, sometimes director, and star of Barry. And this is Making a Scene. Yeah, 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 this is the dude. Are you sure? Uh, does it look like the picture Goulet gave us? I think so. So much of this sequence started in Bill's head. We had built this idea of this, you know, of this kind of revenge army coming after Barry. And in doing that, I thought it'd be very interesting to have um, one of the people that Stephen Root's character go to be a group of motocross bikers. I remember when I first got the script, it was written in normal script format, and then it was just like an italicized line that said, there will be a great lane splitting sequence. Living in Los Angeles, when you're in traffic, those motorcycle, people on motorcycles split the lanes and they go past you. And sometimes it could be very frightening. When we got the script, it basically was just like a slug line in the script that, you know, there's going to be a really crazy, massive, you know, uh, motorcycle car chase sequence. And we're like, oh, well, what does that mean? Once we kind of got into production and, and sat down with Bill and kind of listened to what his vision was for it, we realized that it was kind of, it was going to be a beast. You know, there was just a lot of segments, a lot of pieces to it that he wanted to incorporate uh, into this, this full sequence. <laughs> Bill's bucket list item was like trying to do it on the 10 freeway, you know, between like downtown and, and the 405, which is, you know, one of the most, you know, one of the most traveled segments of freeway in the United States. Um, and having an idea that that wasn't going to work, you know, it's like we had to figure out other alternatives and, you know, Caltrans was super helpful with that because, you know, they track traffic counts. And so that, you know, they, they kind of gave us some ideas of places we were, we could go. That was essentially the beginning of the discussions of how complicated the sequence was going to be. And, and essentially a lot of it was having to do with that first shot, which is, is a combination of one. We, we always knew once we were on the freeway that we needed just to find a stretch of road in which we could sort of control and we we cast a wide net i mean we were we kind of just on something like this we just opened it up pretty much to the entire state of california we were able to land on a couple of segments that happened to be you know really close to la which is like the 710 um 710 freeway between the 10 freeway and i think it's valley boulevard in uh, alhambra as one segment. And then the other segment was the 710 freeway uh, in Pasadena between uh, California and uh, the 210 freeway. The show really moves, but it also takes its time. And I think that extended into the way this action sequence unfolds. It's what you normally think of with a motorcycle chase sequence, I think is very different than what you see in this episode. And I really like this idea of like a chase sequence that is also kind of taking its time. And it's also told very much from a single perspective, which normally I think in an action sequence, you do a lot with very quick cutting. You're cutting between lots of different characters. And for the most part in this sequence, we're really just with Barry and we're getting all the information as he's putting it together. It starts with him sitting at a you know stoplight or at a stop sign in his car and overhearing conversation around him. And it's all kind of told from within the car and seeing in the rearview mirror what he's seeing. And 
And kind of over the course of the sequence, it follows that line. And a lot of the shots of our like um, villains are all taken from Bill's character's perspective. And it's these just weird wide shots where you see these two tiny figures in the distance and the, you hear this far away sound of their motorcycles. But we don't shoot them as these particularly like action movie villains that are, you know, stylized in a really um, normal way. And that, you know, that became one of the big, one of the funny challenges on set was working with these incredible stunt motorcycle performers. And, you know, most of our material was shot with cameras mounted to motorcycles. The, the first day of shooting actually was, was the, lens split, the lane splitting. And we had these bikes that had um, little arms on them with the camera on it. I believe we shot at 27, 25, 27 millimeter lens going, you know, behind them and in front of them and two cameras for each position. So what it was one guy would only have the camera in the front of him and he would shoot anything going that way, pushing, and then another guy had a camera on the back and he would do anything pulling. The entire Taylor clan are all really, 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 really accomplished riders. They were all pros at one point in their life. Um, Clay Cullen, the guy who um, goes over the handlebars after the gun handoff, Clay was a champion jet ski guy and, and motocross guy. You know, our stunt coordinator was like, you know, I could do a lot more stuff with these, these motorcyclists. And I was like, no, it should just have a sense of um, just a, a regular chase, but don't um, they don't need to be doing crazy stunts because then that, that, for me at least, takes me out of it in a way. You want to build to something a little off and a little odd. Just by having Barry have the beignets, you know, a bag of beignets kind of helps you. I think in a, in an early draft of the script, it was this thing was a diner. Like Carl, our DP, wanted to catch the light at a certain time. You know, it was like he wanted to have it at magic hour, which is like sunset. We weren't finding places that had big enough windows. Bill really wanted to do this kind of like in a in a wide shot oneer, and we were looking at like laundromats. You know, I mean, just stuff like lifestyle kind of places where just like. You know, people would be out doing their their daily thing and then have all this stuff like happen around them. And then one of our scouts, Chelsea Lawrence, uh, you know, came across a closed dealership out in Torrance and, you know, sent the pictures in and it was like, oh, this is great. What's so fun about this sequence is that it's an action sequence that takes its time. And we really wanted that final shot to really kind of express that. And so what we really wanted for that last shot is to go from something that's pretty dynamic in terms of movement and then suddenly kind of slow down and then let a bunch of action take place in a way that would be uh, contrast to what we'd seen previously, but also, uh, strong visually and kind of funny because it's still you we still want to insert those elements of like absurdity and humor into the world of Barry and so you know for that last shot um, something that Bill really wanted was to be able to see into this dealership and see people running around and pyrotechnics going off and the silhouette of the rider on the rooftop and all of that necessity of shooting at a really specific time of day. That was this idea that we talked about of these other stories are happening in Los Angeles and Barry's just happens to be one of them. The idea that that car salesman saves the day too, you know, he, he stops the carnage. Mr. Kleintop, which is named after our first AD, Gavin Kleintop. And, and I kind of enjoy that, like giving these other people kind of, they're in the foreground in that moment, <laughs> you know? And them just reacting to that, I just, um, I don't know, there's just something very funny, but also visually really interesting.